This video is going to go over my process for designing and laser cutting a layered forest scape, like the one you see on the screen right now. This is one I did earlier kind of as a test, figuring things out before I did this video, and this will give you an idea of what the end result is going to be. I'll be doing the design work here in Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have access to Illustrator, things like Inkscape or other illustration tools will work fine. Uh, just use whatever you're comfortable with. We'll be doing the layout for the laser in Lightburn Studio, and then we'll be actually doing the cutting itself on my Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser. A couple disclaimers before I get started with this. I am in no way a graphic designer or an artist. Uh, I use these tools for the software development I do to create icons and slight images, so there are probably a lot better ways to do what you're gonna see me doing here. If you have ideas or tips or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for ways to kind of improve and build up the way I do these designs and do the work on the laser cutter. And the second one is just kind of the standard disclaimer is once I get into Lightburn, the settings I'll be using may not be the exact same ones you need to do, use on your laser. Even if you have the same model laser I do, there are going to be differences in that diode. So make sure you've gone through and done your material testing for cutting and engraving and everything along those lines so that you get the end result you're looking for. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go and do a new project. I like to do work it at a six by six, and I do that because the boards I have are 12 by 12. So if I do it at a six by six, I can scale it down a little bit and get up to four different layers on the same board, which makes it a little easier for me to conserve everything as so I'm going through and getting things loaded into a shadow box. So we'll get that created. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and make this as three layers. So we'll go ahead and get those layers set up. On the bottom layer, the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna draw our rectangle that's going to give us our frame for the different boards. So we'll come here to the top of the corner, we'll drag it all the way down. We want to go and change the stroke so it is a inner stroke. You wanna align the stroke to the inside. Mine's already set that way, so I always use my rectangles, but that's, that'll be there. And then you wanna go ahead and change your stroke. We want the edges, I like to do them as kind of a tiered, with the bottom being around 24 point, and then 16, and then eight. And that gives you a nice tiered effect that helps with the layering and that the depth view of it. So we'll go ahead and set this one as the bottom layer to 24. We're going to turn off the fill on this because there's no need to keep that there. And then we'll go ahead and select it, copy it, with control C, Go to layer two, control shift V to paste in place. We'll change this one down to 16 point. And we're gonna go and change the color of the stroke. We're gonna do a different kind of layers and shades of gray as we're going through there and that gives us a nice visual distinction. Then we'll go ahead and take this one and we'll copy it and paste it onto the bottom layer. We'll change that to an even lighter shade of gray and we'll make this one eight points. And as you can see here, now you have a nice differentiator between your different layers. So as you're building things up and as you do the cutting, you have a nice crisp layer structure for the tiering of everything on there. When I'm doing these, I like to do the bottom layer first and then kind of work my way up. So we'll go ahead and hide those top layers. And what I tend to do is I'm gonna freehand this with the pencil tool. The pencil tool works really well for something like this and also helps with my lack of design skills because we're doing a forest scape in nature, we don't need very crisp lines, we don't need perfection, we just need a good enough look to give us that illusion of trees as we're going through there. Another thing I'm gonna point out is what I'm gonna be doing is making birch trees. I like using birch trees because they have the, the stripes in the bark or lenticels, and they give a very distinctive look to the trees as you're building out your different layers, as well as giving an additional effect for pieces you can see through to see the lower layers as you stack everything up. What you'll want to do as you're working through this is on this bottom layer, you'll make your trees a little bit thinner because they'll be further back and away from the viewer, and then make them slightly larger as you come forward. You don't wanna to get too big because you don't wanna to obstruct too much of the view as you're going through it, but you do wanna make it so that you can actually see the difference in the size. So we're gonna go ahead and select the pencil tool with N and that'll get into pencil tool. Um, one other thing I wanna show here is if you double click on the pencil tool, you have the option to change the fidelity. By default, it starts in this middle position, which smooths out the lines and gives you a lot of curves. 
generally I don't want that when I'm doing these trees. So I'll drop it down one or even two notches. It really depends on how good you are with your mouse, how shaky your hands are and everything like that. So I drop it at least one, that way it's more close to the actual lines you draw rather than smoothing everything out. So we'll go ahead and with that, we'll go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and change my stroke here back to the black for the bottom layer. And for these pencil lines, we're going to make, we just want them to be one point. We don't need a big thick lines in this because we will actually have a fill on it. So we'll do a one point and we'll set the fill to black as well. Okay. So now we're going to come in here and we're just going to go ahead and start our drawing. So I'll come here to the corner, I'll kind of come up. I'll come out a little bit to have a little knot, and then we'll go up some more, come over. Ooh, this is going to be way too thin. It's not going to be too bad. Um, what you can do is when you have these lines like this where my hand shook and so I've got this too thin, if you go and select the A tool, it gives you the point selector. We can come here, we can select this one anchor. We can pull it out a little bit to kind of build things up. And we'll go ahead and stretch this one out a little bit as well. That's a little bit better for what I was looking for there. Um, let's go ahead and do, go ahead and get rid of this one. Actually, that line didn't work the way I wanted it to. We'll do that on a different one. And get rid of this one too. There we go. So with that out of the way, what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and go back to the pencil tool and we're going to add some branches coming off of this tree. So we'll go back to our N. You want to start here in the middle. You don't want to come here to the edge. If you click on the edge here, it's going to continue that path. And we just want to kind of intercept. So we'll come here, we'll do a bit of a branch, come out. We'll actually come all the way up here. And we want to close it out. And we'll do another one over here. And we'll just do this one as a single branch. Okay. We want to go ahead and select those branches and the tree. We're going to go to Pathfinder. We're going to go ahead and merge those so they come together as a single shape. The next step is to add in those stripes and the bark. So we'll zoom in a little bit here. We're going to hit A to go back to our direct selection tool and select that entire path. For me, what I've discovered works the best is using the cutting tool with C and cutting out the edges where you're going to kind of start for the opening of there. With that selector, we'll go ahead and delete those. You want to go ahead and select that again. Come back into the pencil, and you'll notice when you get over that point, the icon next to the pencil becomes that line. That lets you know that we're going to continue and extend that line. So we'll start there. We'll kind of drag in a little angle line here, and then we'll come back. And you see there it has a closed circle. That means it's going to close out that shape and do the full cutout. So we'll let that go. We'll come back. We'll do the cut with C again. We'll come down here. We'll do another one down here. Delete that. And for our pencil, close it out, come down a bit, C to cut, 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 delete, delete. And for our pencil, close it out, come down here, cut, cut, delete, delete. Pencil. Draw. That's gonna be a big one. And one more down here. Cut. Cut. Delete. Delete. I'm not sure why I have to hit delete twice to get the full thing, but it's what happens to me. If that doesn't work on you, just you just want to make sure you cut out that entire piece that you've cut there to give you the ability to add in the, the little cutout like that. And now we'll zoom back out a bit, and you can see here now we have what fairly closely resembles a birch tree. We've got the, the main trunk, we've got the branches, and we've got the, the lenticels or stripes into the tree. I'm going to make a couple more trees here on this background layer. It's going to be the exact same process, so I will speed it up a little bit so you don't have to watch through that. And then we'll come back in and I'll show you how to build the grass along the bottom to kind of give a nice full forest escape for it.
And with that, we have our background layer of the birch trees. Uh, you can see it's not perfect. There's a lot of things I would probably tweak in here and adjust as we're going through here, and I'll clean this up a little bit later. But now that we have the trees there, what we want to do is we want to add some kind of tufts of grass to go along the bottom. You can do bushes or foliage, whatever really makes sense, whatever you feel comfortable drawing. Um, for the grass though, what I'll do is I'll come down here a little bit and I'll zoom in. And I'm going to go back to the pencil tool. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a couple little swoops. And that gives me what, uh, well, let me shrink that up a little bit can be a little tuft of grass. So we'll go ahead and drag that down here. We'll rotate that a little bit more. Now we'll go ahead and take this and we'll copy it and paste it. And we will flip it around, rotate it back, put that down here like that, copy and paste. and paste, flip it again, rotate, bring it down here, and we'll go back to the original. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to repeat this a bit. Um, I'm going to again, build out some random looking grass along the bottom. You want to make sure that it's random enough that your eyes are going to be drawn to a pattern with a repeating pattern if you copy and paste too much. But at the same time, you don't want to spend too much time just building up this grass. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the building out of this entire layer of grass and we'll come back in and see the final result for this layer and then move on from here. All right, so now we've got a few types of graph. We'll go ahead and zoom out and see how that looks. And I'm happy with that. Uh, it's nice, fills out the bottom there to give us a nice kind of full look to everything. It's random so that it doesn't have a kind of consistent pattern that your eyes are going to get drawn to. And it connects in with the trees a good amount. So we've got this bottom layer. And now, like I said, we're going to move up a layer to each of those, those different shades of gray to build up layer two and then the top layer. And we'll make the trees a little bit thicker and uh, not as densely packed, so a little more sparseness to them. But we'll go through that. And I'm going to speed that up as well, just kind of build you out so you don't have to watch me dragging and clicking through everything. But at the end, then we'll come back together and kind of look at the final layers and how it's going to look. And then we'll start looking at the importing into Lightburn.
Okay, so that gets us all our layers. We'll zoom out here and take a look at how everything looks all finished. Um, again, as I said at the beginning, I am in no way an artist, but it still it gives me that feel I was looking for with the layout. Uh, you can see some of the branches are a little bit too big. The lenticels aren't very distinctive. There's a, a lot of consist, uh, repetition between them. But overall, I think it looks nice. And once we put this into Lightburn and load it onto the laser cutter, uh, we should have a really nice end result once we cut everything out and stack it. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to tweak a little bit on the branches, like this one here, where it's a little bit too thick, as well as this one, and thin it up a little bit. But then here in a moment, we'll go ahead and do the import into Lightburn. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. The way we're going to export this to get it ready for Lightburn is we're going to go through each layer and we're going to select everything on the layer. We'll right click, collect for export as a single asset. Then we'll go down, we'll go to the next layer, select all of it, right click, collect for export as a single asset. And then the last layer, select all, right click, Select for export as a single asset. And what that does is that gives us all three layers as separate images. I like to export them as a four times scale PNG file. Uh, you can do SVGs. You have to do a little bit more work to get them ready to go as an SVG because you've got to make sure all your lines are clean and your strokes are uh, consistent so that it import properly. But with Lightburn, what you'll see me do here in a minute is we'll take these PNGs, we'll load them in, and then we'll use the trace image function to get everything loaded in and ready to do a fill cut onto our wood. All right, so I'll catch up here in a minute back in Lightburn and we'll go on from there. Over here in Lightburn, we'll get started with a blank project. The first thing I like to do when I'm doing any of these uh, framing is to add in a rectangle or circle, depending on what material I'm working with, and set it to the dimensions of the material that I'm going to be using. In this case, it's going to be using a square board that's about 280 by 280 millimeters of workable space. We'll go ahead and move that down to the lower left and set it to a tool layer. What you'll notice here is a tool layer is set to use it for framing. What that means is when we start placing in the actual four escapes on here, we can align them within that board so we can position them exactly where we want them to cut out of the whole piece of material. And it allows you to make sure you're, you're optimizing your use of the space and that you're not going to get any overcuts and it, it kind of eases the framing a little bit. So that frame in place, we'll go ahead and hit Control I to do an import and we'll in import the bottom layer first. We don't actually want to use this image. We want to convert it over to a line. So to do that, we'll use Alt T to get the trace. And you can see here, this gives us at that pink line to show us the, the edging it's going to be tracing out there to give us. I recommend also doing this delete image after trace that will add in the line component and then remove the image since we don't need that any longer. So we'll get that. You can see there that gives us that nice line layer uh, of that four escape, and we're going to go ahead and move that to an actual working layer. In this case, we just put on layer one. Uh, that's going to be a little bit too big. We're not going to be able to fit the three different ones on there, so we'll change this down to um, 135 by 135, and we'll go ahead and select to move it, and we'll drag it down here to the lower left corner. I want to go ahead and Control I to import the next layer up, and then the same thing, Alt T to trace. Delete image after trace, make sure it looks good in the lines, and OK. We'll set this one also to the 135 by 135, and we'll move it down here. And then we want to do a Control I to import our last layer. And again, we're going to Alt T to trace. OK, that's interesting. So what you can see here is it's got these extra lines inside here. What that means is when I was doing my merge, I didn't have things selected correctly. So it didn't actually merge the, the two uh, pencil lines together correctly. That's OK, though. We can use uh, Lightburn to clean that up. But So we'll go ahead and hit OK to finish that. We'll go ahead and resize this to the 135 
by 135. Uh, let's go ahead and move it over here a little bit so we can clean it up. So we'll zoom in. We're going to right click on this and choose ungroup. And then we can go in here and select all these extra bits that we don't want to delete them out. Uh, okay, that one looks good. Okay, we'll come over here and do the same thing over here. So again, we select all the pieces that aren't good, delete them. Uh, go down here and do the same down here. So Delete, delete, and we'll zoom back out. Okay, that looks pretty good now. So we're gonna go ahead and select that full thing and we wanna go ahead and regroup it. Just make sure it's all connected. And then we're gonna go ahead and move it in over here. So that gets us our layout and we can see here by having that framing layer at the 280 millimeters, we can tell that all three of these are now going to fit on that board and then we'll have an extra square here. So technically I could have done four layers if I wanted to. Um, over here in the cuts and layers, we do want to make sure that all of these four escape pieces are set to line mode. And for me, I'm going to be using my balsa wood 1 16th inch thick cutting on a honeycomb which has a speed of 150 millimeters per minute and a power of 100%. I have a couple of different options here. I have one that is doing a three pass, which goes faster at a lower power and does the multiple passes. And it all depends on that look you're wanting to get. Just remember, my settings may not be the exact same for yours, even if you're using the exact same laser. So just make sure you've done your material tester and know exactly what you want to get the output and the final result. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and show a sped up video of the actual cutting process and then we'll come back at the end and I'll show you the finished product as well as a, another one I had done that did a little bit different. I included the silhouette of a deer on it as well. So here we go. And here we are with the finished result. If you actually watched the cutting part of the video that was sped up, you probably noticed that the final piece ended up cutting the top layer in the top left corner of the board instead of the top right corner. Uh, that happened because the boards I bought from Amazon are really cheaply made and they have a lot of bowing and flexing in them. So as the laser was cutting the top layer in the top right, the board popped up and the laser head caught it and dragged the honeycomb out of position. Uh, that happens, one, because the boards are really cheap, but then also on the Atomstack A5 M50 Pro, the laser head has such a short focal length that it's really close to the boards, which means it's extremely sensitive to any kind of fluctuations. So if it pops up even a little bit, when the laser head is positioning itself, it'll catch on any of the pieces that are sticking up and drag it out. So you've got to be very careful to watch for that as you're going through it. Overall, though, once I positioned it into the top left, um, I really like the end result that we got here. You can see the different layers for those framing rectangles give it that nice tiered or staggered look. You can, of course, make your rectangles and the frames all the same thickness. And if you do that, then you have the option of just intermixing your layers, switching them around to get the exact look you like. Um, to me, I like the added depth effect that that gives it. 
So I, I kind of keep going with that tiered look whenever making these or the mandalas or anything like that. So this is the one that we designed in Illustrator earlier on in the video with just the three different layers of trees. And then I also have another one I made earlier that is two layers of trees and then the middle layer is a silhouette of a deer. You can see I, I did the tiered uh, rectangles for the framing on this one as well to kind of give that depth effect. But that's a nice thing about doing it like this is it all comes down to whatever you want it to look like. You can do a mix of trees and animals. You can add bushes. Uh, you can do pine trees or whatever you like just to get that really nice look that you're going for with your end result. Um, there's not too much difficulty with it. Once you kind of get the hang of it, it all just kind of flows. And it's just a matter of building it out exactly what you want. So if you guys have any tips or suggestions, better ways I could have done something, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions that I could help with, please free to ask them and I'll answer whatever I can. Uh, again, I don't know everything about this. I'm not an artist. I'm still new to a lot of this, but I am happy to help wherever I can. So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up and good luck to you everyone out there as you're doing your laser cutting or an engraving. And I hope you have some really great end results.